Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be learning how to handle themes in your application using CSS variables. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So I really like the way Twitter handle changing their theme. If you go to Twitter settings, display, I think it's display settings, and you'll see basically these options for changing aspects of the theme, such as the font size, the main color, and the background. So what I've done is I've made an application which is very similar to, to that display settings page. This is a brand new Create React app. All I added was a SAS dependency, and I've updated the app.js and app CSS just to get something that looks like th those settings. That's not too important for, for this video, but it'll be all up in uh, GitHub if you wanna take a look. The main thing to note is that we have a form with three radio buttons here, or radio groups, should I say, and right now they don't do anything. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to update this to, to basically handle the, the change in theme and see how that looks. So let's get started. So I'm just gonna start off by creating our theme using the CSS variables. So I'm just gonna create a theme SAS file and we're just gonna add the root selector. So this selector here just resolves to the highest element within the document, highest possible element within the document. So in most cases, I think that's just gonna be the HTML element and that's where it's gonna place the CSS variables, which is usually a good place to use it, especially for a theme that you might use across the entire app. And CSS variables are usually prefixed with a double hyphen and then the, the name. So I'm just gonna add one for each of these properties. So we'll have one for size, one for the, I'm gonna call this color primary, one for background, and one just for the, I guess the standard color. So I just need the four there. So size, I'm just gonna default that to one rem. The color primary is going to be this blue, so that's gonna be the default one there. The background is gonna be white, and the text color is going to be black. There we go. So this is our theme. Now we need to actually use them within the application, and the way you use them typically uh, within CSS is by calling the var function, and then pass in the name of the, um, the property that you're gonna use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to, first of all, I'm going to index uh, SAS file, which I've also cleared. I'm going to import the theme and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a utility, just a class, CSS class for each of my uh, theme variables. And what you can do is for each of these, we can just do the attribute and the property that I need. So font size, and I'm, like I said, I'm going to use the var function here and I'm just going to pass in size. For color primary, we can do, I think this is just color and var color primary, background, background color. And this is gonna be again, bar, background. And finally, the color is going to be color and bar, hyphen, hyphen, color. There we go. So now we've got these, we can basically start using them in our app. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna head over to the app.js and I'm just gonna pop this all in my main. Now I'm just gonna do that by doing class name, and I'm just gonna basically pass in uh, everything that we need here. So we know that we want the size, the color, oh, the background, sorry, and the color. So the color primary won't actually go here because we don't want the color for all the text to be this color. There's just gonna be certain elements. Um, so we'll add that to the certain elements. So for example, we can add the color primary here. And let's just add that to a few more elements, such as, I think we'll add it to this color text and then maybe just to the, um, yeah, to the labels here, just so we can see them changing. So if I save this, you shouldn't really see anything change other than the color primary, that's fine. And if we inspect the element here, if I just bring this up a bit, what you'll see in the styling section here, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see inherited from HTML. You can basically see, oops, you can see the root elements and the variables there, which is really cool to see. And basically the, the most important thing here is at any point, if I, for example, go over to the body, to the root, uh, to the main class here, at any point I can override any of the CSS variables. And that's how we're gonna be changing the theme. So for example, we have the, um, the size variable here. So I can just say, override the size variable and make that you know 10 pixels or whatever it is and that will essentially update any CSS rule that's using that variable right so same with the that color primary 
So we can see it there and I can just go through all the colors and you can see it switching there. So that's going to be the basis of how we're going to change the theme. So for changing the theme, I like to typically use data attributes somewhere uh, as basic as high up as we can in terms of elements uh, in the application. So for this basic application, I'm going to add some data attributes onto the main class. And the reason I use data attributes is just because they can be controlled with, in this case, with React, with React state. So it's really easy to kind of change and and see the, the, the theme values there. So what I'm going to do um, is, first of all, I'm going to capture the theme um, values from these different forms. And then I'm going to use that piece of state to update data attributes. And then we can move on to the CSS side of that. So I'm going to add a state here called theme and set theme. And I'm going to give this a default value of, um, so size default is going to be, and we'll, we'll pick basically the defaults that are already there for the radio buttons. So these values need to match. So I've already got some uh, values here, so just small to, to large for the size. For the color, I think I've just called it color. Uh, important to note as well, the name here matches as well. So size here matches the name of the, the radio button here. The color input is going to be called color, so that's fine. We'll call that color, and I think the value is blue for blue. And then the last one is background, and that's going to be light. There we go. So that's the, the theme there. Let me just import new state. And next up, we're just going to add a on change function onto the form to basically capture the, the changes there. So on change, and I'll just pass an on change function. There we go. And let's just make that function. So this will take in an event. And from the event, we can basically get the name and the value of the um, of the radio button. So and that all exists in the target. So event.target. There we go. So event.target will bring back the basically wherever whatever radio button you click on. And that will have an associated name and the value there. And what we can do is we can just update the theme with those values. So I'm going to take the theme, take the previous state, and I'm just going to return the previous state, but I'm going to override name. In this case, it'll be size, color, or background with the new value that we've selected. There we go. So that should be changing. Um, let's just do one. Let's actually use the theme to, to see that in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to destructure the values from theme. So size, background, color. And I'm going to add three data attributes here that will basically represent each of these. So let's do this data theme hyphen size color background. And I'll just make that equal to the variable or the state variables. So size color background. There we go. So if I inspect the element here, I go into the elements, I look at, let's see if you can see that properly, that's fine. We look at the main here, we can see the different themes and as I change, so as I change the font size, we can see, see that changing. Same with the color and same with the background. Great. Now, how do we get this to change the theme? Well, we can use CSS and we can use selectors on the data attributes with the values. So let's check that one out. I'm just going to head over back into the theme CSS because this is all different variants of the theme that we want to address. And what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to add a selector for the data attributes. So let's start, for example, with the size. So what we want is a selector that looks for the data attribute data theme size. And we want that to explicitly be equal to, in this case, let's start with XS. So that's the, the smallest one here. And we're saying if that matches, so if it finds this attribute with this value, what we're going to do is we're going to update the size variable. So size, and we're just going to make that 0.8. Rem. And now what that does is anything, wherever this attribute is found, in our case, the, the main tag, anything within that, the size custom variable is going to be updated to this new value or this rule is going to be applied. So now if I take this out of the way, actually, if I go to XS, you should see it's going to get smaller. And then basically any other one that we click right now, this rule won't be applied. So it's going to return to default. So we can basically apply the same thing for all the different sizes. So XS all the way up to XL, the different rules. And as we now go up and down that scale, it's going to change. And we can do the exact same thing for the color and the background. So I'm just going to paste them in here. So again, data theme color, data theme background. And that's just all the different 
options for the colors with the different values overriding color primary. And for the background, instead of just the one, we're gonna update the background color as well as the text color itself. So both these two variables are gonna be updated. And if I save that, what we get here is as I change this, text size changes. In this one, we have the color changing just as we like. And the final one, background, is gonna change. Perfect. So I think that pretty much wraps up all the, the functionality. There's one little bonus tip just to make it look a bit nicer, which is something that I like to use. So I'm just gonna head over to the index CSS here, and I'm just gonna add in one thing to the main, which is where all the changes are happening, which is a, a transition effect. So right now, if I just comment this out, the, the changes are quite quite harsh as we look, as we move, it just kind of jumps up and down, especially for the, the text and the background. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add in a transition. And basically the transition, you just put in the attribute that you want to transition. So in this case, font size, the color and the background. So I'll just show you the example of the font size, the time for the transition or how long it takes. In this case, we'll just do 0 0.25 seconds and the transition function. So in this case, uh, I'm just gonna add an ease. Uh, I think it's ease in, it's the one I like. Uh, and basically you can just replicate this multiple times, one for, like I said, uh, color and one for background here, background color. There we go. So if we update this now, you can see that the basically there's a yeah there's a transition animation. It's a lot smoother when we change it. It's not kind of harsh changes. So you can see that with the text and mainly with the uh, background as well. So I think it's just a, it's a nice little touch to to add to an application. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, one thing that I didn't cover is, of course, here we're keeping the theme in local state. So every time you refresh or you know close the browser and come back, it's gonna it's gonna be gone. So ideally, in a big application, you're gonna want to store that somewhere, whether it's you know local storage or you know database configuration, however you you handle that in your application. But um, yeah, thank you very much for for watching. Uh, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one.